Hello, I'm Jeff Boyd. In this video, we're going to talk about the reciprocity theorem, which basically means in this double slit experiment that the waves could be going this way or that way, and we would still have the same pattern on the target screen and the same mathematical equations. We're going to rely heavily on pictures in this video rather than mathematical equations. Most of our viewers see don't like mathematical equations too much. And besides which, elementary wave theory, unlike quantum physics, is fully picturable. I propose to show that no matter which way the waves are going, you get the same interference. Now the interference is the soil out of which grows two things, the pattern on the target screen and the mathematics. Most quantum mechanics experts have never thought about this issue. When they say we have equations that work, they've only done half their homework because the waves could be going this way or that way with those same mathematics. What we need is a schematic model to show you these waves. So we're going to put this wooden model in this direction. This is actually the first of two models that we will use. Now when a wave starts at some point on the target screen, it can be represented as circles or as arrows. The particular wave you see here will reach the lower of the two slits first. Therefore it will penetrate and go through that lower slit and as the arrow through the lower slit proceeds towards the electron gun it is slightly ahead of the arrow through the upper slit. When the two hour arrows converge at the electron gun one will be perhaps out of phase or perhaps in phase with the other one. Now what does it mean for two waves to be in or out of phase. To answer the question about the phase of the waves, we need to return to our model uh, the second time. First we'll place the double slit model in this direction and then we're going to foreshorten this side. We're going to bring the electron gun shorter and show you a model like this. Now what you're looking at here is the electron gun on the left, the double slit barrier in the middle and the target screen on the right with the familiar pattern. Also on the target screen you will notice numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If we start with the pattern on the target screen and look at the lowest bunch of dots which are shown with these blue arrows and which we call point number 5, what I want to call your attention to is the relative length of two paths. Path A starts at number 5, goes through the upper slit and impinges on the electron gun or vice versa, could go the other way. Path B goes through the lower slit. I'm saying that in this model path A is exactly two wavelengths longer than path B. Thus, any wave, whichever way it goes, along path A will end up two wavelengths behind its twin going along pathway B. We're going to imagine that this is the electron gun and this is the target screen. Now, of course, somewhere in the middle here, there should be a barrier with two slits in it. The waves start their journey in phase. They are after all, two aspects of the same wave. The part of the wave that goes on path A has exactly two wavelengths further to go at the same speed as the wave that goes on path B. Thus, when they arrive at the end of their journey, they, one has lost two wavelengths relative to the other and they are still in phase, meaning that, you know, they're in harmony here. Therefore, if it should happen that the waves are going in this direction, there is constructive interference at the target screen. Now, what does constructive interference mean? It means that the peak of one wave adds to the peak of the other wave, and the interference causes much taller waves than there were before. 
This increases the probability that at the point of wave function collapse, a dot will appear on the target screen. If, on the other hand, the waves were going in this direction, once again, the wave going through path A goes twice as far. They arrive two wavelengths uh, out of sync, which means that they are still in phase which again means the same thing. Constructive interference, taller waves, increased probability of the emission or stimulation of an electron in response to these waves. The electron would then follow one of the waves backwards to the point on the target screen from which the waves started, which is the exact same point that would have appeared on the target screen had the waves been going in the other direction. Now let me ask you a question. Do you see any difference in the interference, whether the waves go this way or this way? Someone could say, look, you say it's the same interference, but it's located in different places. In one case, it's located at the target screen. In the other model, it's located at the electron gun. My reply would be, yes, but A, it's still the same interference. And in addition, it's located in the same place. You can't see the waves, you can't see the interference. It's only where you imagine it to be. And therefore, whichever way the waves go, it, the interference is located inside your imagination. There was, in fact, a slight misrepresentation of quantum mechanics in what I just said. I will explain that in a minute. We now return again to the target screen and look at the white area marked with blue arrows, what I'm calling point number four on the target screen. Once again, we want to compare the relative length of two paths. This time, path A through the upper slit is exactly one and one half wavelength longer than path B through the lower slit. Doesn't matter which way the waves are going. This time the waves start in phase. They are two aspects of the same one wave. The wave going through path A has one and one half wavelengths further to go at the same speed and therefore it arrives one and one half wavelengths behind its mate. Thus they arrive like this, out of phase there is destructive interference. Now, destructive interference means that the peak of one wave is obliterated by the valley of another wave and you get pretty much no waves in the interference. If it should happen the waves are going in this direction, there's destructive interference, almost no probability of the stimulation of an electron, and therefore, whatever point on the target screen these waves originated from will remain white because no electron is likely to land there. If, on the other hand, it should happen the waves are going in this direction, quantum mechanics style, they are once again out of phase. There is once again destructive interference, almost no waves in the interference and probability being about zero that a dot will appear on the target screen in the quantum mechanics model when there is wave function collapse. What difference does it make in the interference whether the waves go this way or this way? However, the problem with what I'm just saying is that quantum mechanics cannot be pictured. They do not, for example, talk about waves, such as I've been talking about, they talk rather about probability waves, probability waves, and no one can make a picture or even understand what probability waves are, and furthermore, there aren't just individual probability waves, such as in my diagram, there is a fuzzy cloud of probability waves. Nothing in quantum mechanics can be known more than that until a dot appears on the screen, at which point there is wave function collapse and suddenly an electron does exist. It comes out of superposition, which it had been in previously. 
and so you get lost in confusion. If, however, you try to work out the probability that an electron dot will appear at point number four on the target screen, what you will find in quantum mechanics is that that probability is directly related to the kind of interference that I've been talking about. And the interference is the same whether the waves go from the left to the right or the right to the left. That's my main point. If we return again to the target screen to the area marked number three, path A is now exactly one wavelength longer than path B. Same story with a slight variation. The waves start in phase. Path A is one wavelength longer than path B, and therefore by the time they get to the end of their journey, one wave is exactly one wavelength behind the other wave. There is constructive interference. If it should happen that the waves are going in this direction, there's an increased probability that a dot will appear on the target screen uh, in the quantum mechanics model. If they happen to be going in this direction, because of the constructive interference, there's increased probability they will stimulate the emission of an electron to follow one of those waves back to exactly that point on the screen where the waves started, which is the same point where a dot would have appeared in the quantum mechanics model. The interference is the same. With the next white area, the one called number two, path A is exactly one half wavelength longer than path B. Thus, whichever wave goes through the upper slit will arrive half a wavelength behind the other one. If the waves start at the electron gun in quantum mechanics, they start in phase like this. They arrive one half wavelength out of phase. There's destructive interference. The peaks of one wave are destroyed by the valleys of the other and vice versa. When the waves arrive at the target screen, there's no waves in the interference. There's no probability that an electron will be detected at that point on the target screen when there is wave function collapse. If, on the other hand, the waves start at the target screen, uh, they start in phase. The one going through path A through the upper slit arrives half a wavelength behind the other one. There is destructive interference. The waves, the peaks of one wave are destroyed by the valleys of the other wave. You get no waves in the interference. There is no stimulation of the electron gun and it's very unlikely that an electron will be emitted and therefore that area of the target screen where an electron might have landed, where the waves originated, is going to remain white. The point of this exercise has been to show that it doesn't matter whether the waves go to the right or to the left. Either way, you're dealing with the same interference. And the mathematics grows out of the interference, which illustrates what the reciprocity theorem is talking about.